Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction into a statistical uh, tool called the normality test. The normality test is basically to, to help you understand uh, whether or not you have a normal distribution. Okay, in this introduction, we will be using uh, mini tab 20. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, before we go into the, the actual normality test, uh, give you a little bit of background on the data that we're looking at the, and the scenario. So the scenario um, is uh, we are a team of green belts. We are engaged in a project to uh, solve a problem. The problem is that uh, uh, we are a company, P PBJ Inc., Peanut Butter and Jelly Inc., uh, and we make uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for schools all over the domestic U.S. Uh, the cost of our sandwich uh, is higher than, than we predicted it to be, so our costs are going up, and we're not really sure why. So we are engaged in a Greenbelt project. As part of that Greenbelt project, we are uh, gonna do a normality test because we are gonna analyze some, uh, a set of data. Uh, and the data that we're analyzing, you'll see down here, you'll see PB top, PB bottom, JY top, JY bottom. Basically, this is the amount of peanut butter added to the top and bottom, as well as the jelly added to the top and bottom. And and if you're a company making, you know, hundreds of thousands of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, um, a shift, all right, then uh, it's really, it's really beneficial uh, that you keep, you know, tight rein on your costs uh, and your process. So we're going to look in particular at PB top, all right? Uh, we, we have an idea that something's going on there. So uh, before we do that, we really need to understand, are we dealing with normal data or abnormal data? All right, really, not, not, I'm sorry, not abnormal data. Uh, let's say uh, non-normal data, okay? Um, and in this case, it, it's, uh, the scenario is we should have a target amount of uh, peanut butter added to the top uh, and the spec limits, all right? The, um, the upper and lower uh, spec limits are really equidistant from that, that target. So in this case, it should be a normal distribution. But again, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna prove that, uh, that presently it fits a normal distribution. Okay, to do a, uh, do a normality test, there's actually several ways you can, you can run a normality test. Uh, I'm gonna show you a very, very basic way. Uh, is under the stat menu. Okay, we go into basic statistics uh, and we come down to the normality test. All right, so we open up that dialog box. That dialog box, we are going to fill in the variable. The variable is the, uh, is the X that we are uh, evaluating. All right. So in this case, it's PB top, where we're interested in understanding uh, is the sample data set that we've taken for PB top, is that, is that uh, normal data? All right, we fill that in. Uh, you're gonna leave everything else here the same. Uh, in, in most cases, your Anderson Darling test will fit just about uh, every test for normality. All right, we'll hit okay. Uh, and that's going to give us a good graph. All right. It's also going to give us some metrics, and, and we'll talk about these in just a second. All right. So what you see here is basically you, you see a bunch of dots snaking around uh, uh, a line. All right. And, and in layman's terms, the closer those dots are uh, and, and the more tightly uh, wrapped around those lines, uh, the more normal the process is. But in this case, we use, uh, we use a metric to really tell us if this is a, a normal distribution or not, all right? And that, that metric is the, the p-value, okay, the p-value. Now, 
I, I'm going to kind of give you the can rule for the p-value, and then I'm going to tell you how that rule might not be um, uh, applicable and at, at all times. Okay, the can rule is that uh, if you have a p-value of lower than, uh, I'm sorry, lower than 0 0.05, all right, lower than 0 0.05. Uh, you do not have a normal distribution. 0 0.05 or greater, right? 0 0.05 or greater, uh, you do have a normal distribution. Okay, that, that's kind of the can rule. But that also takes for granted that you have a confidence level of 95%, which is, you know, that, that's pretty normal. That's pretty standard in, in, uh, in statistics. And most of your, your statistical programs default to that, All right? So we don't see here where we can change that, uh, that confidence, confidence level. Um, so in this case, we're, we're going to take for granted that it's 95%. So therefore, our, our p-value, we, we can interpret that, uh, again, as I told you. So this would be considered a normal distribution. Right with a 0.822, that is that is equal to 0 0.5. I'm sorry, 0 0.05 or greater. 0.822. All right. So we would say that PP top column C1 PP top right here. This is a normal distribution. So therefore, we can evaluate it with with tools that evaluate normal uh, normal data. Okay. Um, again. My name is Kevin Clay, and I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions. Uh, I hope you have a little bit more uh, knowledge of the normality test uh, and, and the use of the normality test, uh, in particular using Minitab version 20. So uh, if you have any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me. My email address is kclay, that's K-C-L-A-Y, at sixsigmadsi.com. I will put that down uh, in the uh, uh, information below uh, in this YouTube video. And have a wonderful day.